Hi, this is Tom from zerodfinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through pyelonephritis. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash pyelonephritis or in the urology section of the Zero Definals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Pyelonephritis refers to inflammation of the kidney resulting from bacterial infection. The inflammation affects the renal pelvis, the joint between the kidney and the ureter, as well as the parenchyma, which is the tissue of the kidney. The risk factors for pyelonephritis are female sex, structural urological abnormalities, vesico-ureteric reflux, which is where urine refluxes from the bladder into the ureters, and this is more common in children, pregnancy, and diabetes. Let's talk about the causes of pyelonephritis. Escherichia coli is a bacteria that's the most common cause of pyelonephritis, as with lower urinary tract infections. E. coli are gram-negative, anaerobic, rod-shaped bacteria that are part of the normal lower intestinal microbiome. E. coli are found in feces and can easily spread to the bladder and then up through the ureters into the kidney. Other causes of pyelonephritis include Klebsiella pneumoniae, which is also a gram-negative anaerobic rod, Enterococcus species, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, and Candida albicans, which is a fungal infection. Next, let's talk about the presentation. The diagnosis of pyelonephritis can be made clinically with a history and examination. Patients have a similar presentation to lower urinary tract infections with dysuria, suprapubic discomfort, and increased frequency of urination, plus the additional triad of symptoms of pyelonephritis, which are fever, loin or back pain, which could be bilateral or unilateral, and nausea or vomiting. Patients may also have systemic illness, for example they can become systemically unwell or septic, loss of appetite, hematuria with blood in the urine, and renal angle tenderness on examination. Next let's talk about investigations. A urine dipstick will show signs of infection, including nitrites, leukocytes, and blood. A midstream urine, or MSU, can be sent to the lab for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity testing. And this is essential to establish the causative organism. The sample should ideally be collected before starting antibiotics. Blood tests will show a raised white blood cell count and raised inflammatory markers, for example, CRP. Imaging investigations may be used to exclude other pathology, such as kidney stones or abscesses. This could be an ultrasound or a CT of the abdomen. Next, let's talk about the management of pyelonephritis. Referral to hospital is required if there are features of sepsis or it's not safe to manage them in the community. The NICE guidelines from 2018 recommend the following first-line antibiotics for 7 to 10 days when treating pyelonephritis in the community. And the options are cephalexin, coamoxiclav if the culture results are available, trimethoprim if the culture results are available, or ciprofloxacin. And with ciprofloxacin, it's worth keeping in mind the risk of tendon damage and the lower seizure threshold. Patients admitted to hospital with sepsis require the sepsis 6, which includes three tests and three treatments. The three tests with the septic 6 are the blood lactate level, blood cultures and urine output monitoring. And the three treatments are oxygen to maintain the oxygen saturations of 94 to 98% or 88 to 92% in COPD 
empirical broad-spectrum IV antibiotics according to local guidelines, and IV fluids. Two things to keep in mind with patients that have significant symptoms or do not respond well to treatment are the development of a renal abscess or kidney stones that may be obstructing the ureter, causing pyelonephritis. Finally, let's talk about chronic pyelonephritis. Chronic pyelonephritis presents with recurrent episodes of infection in the kidneys. Recurrent infections lead to scarring of the renal parenchyma, leading to chronic kidney disease. This can progress to end-stage renal failure. A DMSA scan can be used to investigate for damage to the kidney after chronic pyelonephritis. This involves injecting radio-labeled DMSA, which builds up in healthy kidney tissue. Gamma cameras are then used to image the kidneys and any areas that do not take up DMSA suggest damage or scarring, which could be the result of the chronic pyelonephritis. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.